Okay, so I don't know if this mound is sufficient enough for me to call it a hill, but I suppose I've accepted dying on it if it comes to that, though it really likely won't. Antichrist isn't what the suburbanites think it is. Well, I, I could say that about 21st century Trier in general. His 20th century output is deserving of its accolades. I admire them, those films quite strongly. We've championed Europa on this channel before, for instance. For Dancer in the Dark, I like noticeably less than his prior works. I don't think I dislike it. Pretty film, for certain. Dogville loses me. Antichrist feels like someone wanted to challenge Michael Haneke. And the sad thing is, I don't think he necessarily had that intent whatsoever. And then I think Nymphomaniac was a low point for our cultural institutions at large. What a flat understanding of alleged human complexities by displaying a belief in none of them at all. Of course, we had Melancholia... And I haven't seen the features after Nymphomaniac. I was intrigued to watch the 2018 work, House That Jack Built. And we have a third Kingdom series. I do like me some Kingdom. I wonder if he still despises Swedes. Looking now, I don't think I ever saw Mandalay. I watched Five Obstructions at university nine years ago now-ish. I don't remember much about it. it. was not by any means unwatchable, at least. So Antichrist. The sleek look does it no favours. High def savagery doesn't always gel. Antichrist looks more like high end cinema or television than it does the human experience. It feels more bourgeois than primeval or earthy. And if he was accidentally trying to superficially compete with Haneke, it was the least interesting side of Haneke. After a while, dazzling European critics with the intent of mortifying American critics and English tabloids, what doesn't though, is not edgy or subversive cinema, it is way, way too easy to be characterised as such still. This is the stuff of pseudo-shocking teenage rebellions. The original concept is to reveal that Satan created Earth rather than God. Trier changed this idea once a producer spoiled it to the media in an interview, and so the film seems more considered and sophisticated as a result. But in my opinion, this was a director who had such a high opinion of themselves and felt no inhibitions about engaging with the daunting big idea, the primal similarities of human creation myths, how they intersect with our modern understanding of sexual relations, and whether the human personality is an elaborate cage of callous urge. In Kubrick's case, Eyes Wide Shut was a more refined scaffold for these ideas, an existing literary text placed within the modern environment of turn of the millennium New York City and of the most famous celebrity couple in the world at that time and playing out a relevant, imaginable scenario, marital trouble and paradise, testing of the true love motivator in our culture. Trier well, just traces a story around his core themes, not even naming his players, not that he has to, for the, the, the deceased child is named, I'm unsure why, intent on composing one of the most profound, most human works of all time, but the idea that this is pure human expression or the psyche excavated is a touch superficial, triggering taboos or former taboos, which may or may not be superficial anyway, is hardly an impressive feat, either human sexual pathologies are normal, natural, and nothing to be ashamed of, or it is dangerous, subversive, and eternally edgy. I'm not asking the champions if this film which of these two it is you know i'm instead asking them which would they prefer human sexuality to be considered healthy and organic or edgy and dangerous because i think people are having too much shallow fun with the idea of the latter without addressing the bold bravery of those who pioneered such content in non triple x cinema for artistic or honesty's sake in the mid to late 20th century the great pioneers weren't doing it because it was edgy but because they saw a profound sincerity in it they felt as though it wasn't, ought not to be, an object of controversy, whereas the contemporary equivalent smugly relish in the idea that it still might be. Blowing raspberries, you know, puffing on cigarettes in the boys' bathrooms. Bet that shocks you, doesn't it, Grandma? King Vidor's Bird of Paradise was a distillation of this idea, as one critic put it, of civilization versus sex. And even that dated, trashy, cynical, sex appeal venture was a finer metaphor than Tria's work in Antichrist in 2009. Or at least, it comes across that way, far be it from me, to bemoan how someone moves out of a depressive episode, okay? Although that can't be a sole reasoning behind my championing of the film, I'm not impressed of Antichrist. I at no point wish I had composed anything similar as a much more amateur filmmaker, not for moral or finger-waggy reasons, I just find it forced and hollow. As a piece of weird cinema, as an act of trippy madness, Antichrist has its moments, I won't deny this, or if I had to be as plain and unromantic and unacademic about it as possible, the film is trying too hard, and so are most of its fans. Sorry, that's how it really comes across. Perhaps some felt obligated for perceived bravery on Trier's part to admire the film, but again, 
It was adored and celebrated in Europe. Controversial in America. Oh, what an accomplishment. Wow, incredible. What's new? I honestly didn't think I would be as dismissive in my reassessment. I haven't seen this thing since high school or maybe university era and uh, nah, this hasn't aged well as a piece of media. Not that I was ever a fan, to, to be honest, but I don't think I ever hated it. But I had viewed it close enough to the release date where I wouldn't have considered it dated by default. You know, but 15 years nearly have passed and man, yeah, Antichrist is dated in my own opinion.